Alright guys, here is my trip to Costa Rica with quite an unforeseen outcome. It was an incredible experience. Here I am at the first hotel. My friend and I already made ourselves comfortable even though we only stayed here for one night. And my suitcase is open back there, but I was having trouble opening it. It has like a three digit code, was not working, tried picking it breaking it eventually i tried zero 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 and thank god it opened and at this point in my traveling experience i've lost my passport lost my suitcase missed flights and i feel like i can overcome any challenge that faces my way so this trip was organized by trova trip and we had an awesome tour guide who was local to costa rica and it was sponsored by this youtuber i watch which was great because all the girls on the trip were like-minded people who also enjoy watching that youtuber so the first day we went to a farm here i am drinking fresh coconut and then we went to hike a volcano and this volcano last erupted in 1968 as you can see by this giant rock in front of the attraction and the path of the volcano the trail that you walk on is molten rock so it was the lava that melted down the volcano and it created this path when I checked the weather the day before this trip, it said it was supposed to be torrential downpour every single day, but we got pretty lucky. It just rained a little bit towards the end of our hike and it felt very cleansing. So this was the second hotel we stayed at. They were like little villas and you could see the volcano right outside our door. I was getting up early every morning because I had work to do and I would just take some time to meditate and relax alone before I spent the rest of the day with a whole group of people and then I noticed something fluffy frolicking in the distance. It was this cute Pomeranian girl. My friend Gina and I, we were playing with her and petting her. She's so cute. And when I was touching around her neck, I felt a really big bump. And when I looked closer, I realized it was a huge tick and she was infested with ticks. So Gina and I were pulling them off her. I felt so bad because we were ripping her hair out, but she was letting us do it. She was so sweet. And eventually we found the owner. It was like one of the hotel's employees, wife's cousin's dog. And I don't think he cared that she was infested with ticks. I wish I could have stolen her and brought her back to the US. The next day we went to this waterfall called La Fortuna and we had to hike down a bunch of steps. I'm wearing my Crocs. These were like the best investment because the terrain in Costa Rica is kind of rainforesty. It's very wet and there's like a lot of activities related to water. So definitely recommend water shoes. I did slip down on one of these rocks and hit my knee pretty bad, but I was okay. The moss was like slippery on the rock. And of course we had to take pics. One of the perks about this trip is that we had a professional photographer. And look at me, I look like a model. So I enjoyed that. I have to say that Costa Rica is one of the cleanest places I've been to. Like look, there's no pollution, no garbage anywhere. I feel like the people in the community are very conscious about the environment. And there's a lot of programs here to preserve the wildlife and flora. And I didn't know that the sloth is like native to this country and that we were seeing sloth things like everywhere. But unfortunately, we didn't see a sloth in real life, but still got to enjoy some sights eat some delicious food, everything is so fresh here, and the people, you call them ticos or ticas, they were all really nice and friendly. Unlike in New York, where I feel like I get harassed every single day. And we went over this bridge with some muddy water, home to some crocodiles. We didn't see any crocodile uh, crocodiles that day. 
and then this is the last hotel that we stayed at it was in a little beach town called Jaco and when we got here this is where things went really dark that's when I had a huge blowout fight with my friend and I knew that was the end of our friendship. I felt like I came face to face with the devil and I knew I was leaving there without her. And the rest of the trip was hard. It was emotional and I was really stressed because I had deadlines to meet for school. But I am proud of myself for holding my ground, taking time to get to know the other girls and make other friends and make the best out of a horrible situation. I know a lot of people have experienced losing a best friend and it sucks, especially if you knew this person for a long time and you have so many memories with them. It's been a process processing it. But to give you some context, I've been friends with this girl, let's call her Abby for the sake of, sake of the story. I've known her since kindergarten. We were in the same kin kindergarten class and then we went to school together all up until high school. College is when we actually became really close. I would say that over the past year we had been fighting more. One fight was I said I don't like brunch and she literally went off on me that, you know, it's so rude to say stuff like that and you're so negative. You're so, she just kept saying you're so negative. The time that I was like, at the end of my last semester, like really stressed about school and work, she didn't give up. It's frustrating because I've always supported her in everything. The first few days of Costa Rica were amazing. They were bliss. Like we roomed together, so we would like stay up at night and just like you know talk shit or whatever and listen to music, dancing, we were joking around, having the best time. We got into a fight. We both came together back in the room. We were getting ready to go to dinner. We were trying to resolve the fight at that point because we didn't want to go to dinner angry. I was trying to express that I feel like I don't get enough support from her and like all our fights are really dumb. This fight was like a catch-22. She kept saying that I don't express my feelings very well. And I agree with that. I don't. I suppress everything. And that's because when I do express my feelings, like we're fighting, it's like I can't say anything bad or negative because then she gets mad and then that causes a fight. So then I don't express my feelings and that gives like... She was being harsh and critical on me, talking about childhood trauma and stuff like that. Like all my insecurities. And I was crying at that point because, you know, these are things that are my deepest wounds and stuff that I'm working on and these are things that don't change over the night. When she saw me upset and crying, that's when she came over to me and then started consoling me and like being supportive. Although she was saying these nice things, she kind of just put a band-aid over it because we still didn't figure out why we were fighting. I went to dinner that night upset and I was tearing up at the dinner table and one of the other girls pulled me aside and asked if I wanted to talk and I was like I was trying to explain to her like that we've been fighting a lot and I want to resolve it and just explaining what I need from the relationship what I think needs to improve on my behalf and her behalf Ugh. I was still upset I didn't go to the dinner table but Abby came out and you know talked to me it seemed like things were okay, but I knew they weren't. Well, the big blowout between me and Abby happened the day after our fight before dinner. We were chilling at the beach. Um, I had my iPad, I was doing my work, I had my headphones in because I was listening to some lectures. Abby was sitting five feet away from me. She was talking to the same girl that I was talking to the night before, and she was talking straight shit about me, like literally saying the worst, meanest things. Towards the end of their talk, she, uh, the other girl was like, she's sitting right there, she can probably hear you. Like, and, she, and Abby was like, no, she's dumb, she can't hear, she's deaf. Like, And then Abby and the girl, they get up to go to the bar to get a drink and the girl sitting next to me was like yo Abby was just talking straight shit about you and if I heard my friend talking like that about me I would not be friends with them I couldn't agree more I heard literally every word of it I was in shock but at the same time not surprised because this girl there is no limit to how 
mean and evil she could be. So when Abby and the other girl get back, they sit in their like lounge chairs and I pack my stuff, I go to them and I was like, you can talk shit about me in private now, I'm leaving. I'm sitting by the pool for like an hour and then Abby comes up to me to try to get the key to go back into our room. He was giving attitude to me about it too and I'm like, really? You're gonna give me an attitude after I just heard you talking shit about me five feet away from me? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. And then she just went off on me like, give me the key. I'm like, get your own room. Like, I do not want a room with you. And I didn't give her the key and then she starts cursing at me at the top of her lungs, cursing at me. Honestly, all I saw when she was screaming at me was very dark, evil, cold energy, like zero empathy. It was scary. I felt like I came face to face with the demon because it just felt so cold and evil. The things that she was saying, like literally calling me every curse word in the book, except for slide. That's the one thing she knows she can't call me because I'm not that, but she is borderline, maybe. All I said to her was, you're the fakest person I ever met. And that felt good. I didn't have to curse to express my feelings. Of course we split rooms. After that happened, the last few days were hard for me. It was, I was emotional. I felt stressed, angry, pissed, like it was hard and I'm proud of myself for getting through it and honestly not letting the emotion get to me and punching her in the face and ending up in Costa Rican jail because every part of me just needed to, I wanted to fight back in a way because I've never fought back or ever defended myself. Instead, I stood there like a block of steel. I am a block of steel. I am strong. I think it shows more strength in not, you know, being triggered and reacting to her because that's what she wanted. She wanted a reaction and I just stood my ground. I am in full control of my emotions and that's something she needs to work on because she is so easily triggered. She just acts very impulsively. It's been a month since my trip to Costa Rica and I don't miss her, but I know I've been going through a lot of things emotionally and it might not all be, con it's not all conscious because I have been having dreams about her like every single night. So subconsciously, I think I know what it is. I've never expressed like what I'm truly feeling because I'm afraid of being negative, but then I just bottle up all these emotions and I'm suppressing it. And that's why I feel so much resentment. With our fight, she hits below the belt and cuts deep, like she goes for the carotid. And I feel like that's not normal with the best friends. Like they should not be wanting to intentionally hurt you or put you down, even if they're angry or sad or emotional or whatever. Like there's no excuse to have such an attitude and put someone down. I think if that blowout didn't happen, as dramatic as it was, as I literally was face to face with a demon, it was like a spiritual awakening for me. I'm fine with cutting out people in my life who don't treat me the way that I deserve, who don't support my goals and dreams. Don't put me down, instead, you know, lift me up, bring me up. I'm always gonna have those memories with me and, you know, I'll always think about her. Like, I can't really completely block her out of my life. And even if I tried, my subconscious is gonna, you know, bring her up to the surface as it has been in my dreams. I can't wait to make new friends. I'm excited for this new social chapter in my life. I deserve to have some good friends that support, care about me, and love me. Because how could you not love this? That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm planning on doing a trip to Arizona and can't wait to vlog and do all that. I will be visiting some friends. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. I'll catch you in my next one. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe and follow my Instagram for more cheeky content.